verse number 48 that Allah if he wants he will forgive anything but shirk he will never forgive if a person dies as a mushrik he will never be forgiven Quran also says in Surah Maida chapter number 5 verse number 72 Inno mushrik billah anyone who associates partners with Allah فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ جَنَّةِ Allah will make Jannah haram for him وَمَا وَهُ النَّارِ and fire shall be his dwelling place وَمَا وَهُ النَّارِ وَمَا لِذْ ظَالِمِ مِنْ أَنْسَارِ and for the wrongdoers there will be no help shirk is the biggest sin and imagine that small child is calling that good Muslim a mushrik who's to blame between you and Allah Allah will not make a mistake what about the other people what about the other Muslims? How are they to identify you? Let's discuss what should be the label for the ladies in Islam. <coughs> the best verse I can quote is from Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 31, which says that say to the believing woman, that they should lower the gaze and guard the modesty to display not the beauty except what that appears thereof and to draw the veil over the bosom except in front of the fathers, the sons, the husbands and a big list of mehram, the close relatives who she cannot marry is given besides the husband besides these people you should maintain your hijab and for more clarification, you have to refer to the Sahih Hadiths. There are six points for hijab. The first point is the extent. The first point is the only point which differs between the woman and the men. The extent for the woman is that she should cover her complete body. The only part that can be seen, not should be seen, are the face and the hand up to the wrist. These two parts of the body can be seen, not should be seen. If they want to cover it, Alhamdulillah, it's not compulsory. The extent for the men is nailed to the knee. Only this part, the first criteria differs between the men and the women. All the remaining five criteria are the same for the men and the women. The second criteria is the clothes should not be so tight that it reveals the figure, that, that the curves can be seen. The clothes you wear should be loose. Some ladies, they wear hijab, they may wear the burqa, it's tight fitting. That's not Islamic. The third criteria, the clothes you wear should not be transparent. You should not be able to see through the clothes. You may wear, you may cover a complete body, you may wear a loose gown, but if it's made of a thin material, it's an Islamic. Same way, to the gents, they can't wear anything which is tight in the portion between the navel and the knee. They can't wear stretch jeans. Normal trousers, fine. Stretch jeans, you cannot wear. to the fourth category. The fourth criteria is that you should not wear clothes which are so glamorous that it attracts the opposite sex. Too much fluorescent colors which attracts the opposite sex should be avoided. The fifth category is that it should not resemble that of the unbeliever. You can't wear a cross or a home sign or put a stika that resembles a sign of a Christian or a Hindu. You can't wear any identity which is that of the other religion. And the last criteria is it should not resemble that of the opposite sex. A man cannot wear that which pertains to a woman, neither can a woman wear that which pertains to a man. Men cannot wear earrings. If you go to America, there you find the gays, they wear one earring in the right ear, one earring. You know, 
even the gays are proud to identify themselves. They're wearing one earring. Imagine these homosexuals. They are proud to call themselves gays. They identify themselves. But we Muslims, shame on us. With all the good deeds that we have with us, with all the truth that we have, with all the haq, we are ashamed to identify ourselves as Muslims. Shame on us. Those gays, those homosexuals, they are proud to call themselves gays. And there is a verse in the Quran which is indicating the label for the woman. It's in Surah Ahzab, chapter number 33, verse number 59. It says, O Prophet, tell your wives and your daughters and the believing woman that they should cast their outer garments when they go abroad. Means they should wear an outer covering, a cloak or a coat when they go out. It is more convenient for them. And they will be known and not molested. Allah is of forgiving, most merciful. It says that when the believing women, when they go out, they should wear an outer garment, a cloak. Because they will be recognized as Muslims and they will not be molested. That's what the Quran says. And the best example I can give you is that suppose there are two twin sisters who are equally beautiful. Both are equally beautiful. One is wearing the Islamic hijab. Her complete body is covered. The only part that is seen is the face and the hands. And the other sister, she is wearing a short or a mini. If both of them are walking down the street, and if round the corner there is a hooligan who is waiting for a catch, there is a ruffian who is waiting to tease a girl, who will he tease? Will he tease the girl who is wearing the Islamic hijab, or will he tease the girl who is wearing a short or a mini? But natural, he will tease the girl who is wearing a short or a mini. The Quran rightly says, prevent, to prevent them from being molested. Uh, but unfortunately, even the burqa has been maligned. If you're wearing a burqa, if the lady is wearing a burqa, she's coming from Bindi Bazaar. Partly we are to blame. Unfortunately, there are a few of the Muslim ladies who wear the burqa, but they use vulgar language. They use cheap language. So, the good Muslim women, they don't want to be identified as coming from Hindi Bazaar. Therefore, they prevent from wearing that burqa. Same with the men. They don't want to be identified from Dongri. So they give new names. Where do you come from? Erskine Road. They don't say Hindi Bazaar. Erskine Road. No one knows where the Erskine Road. Erskine Road, Bombay 3, finish. They don't have Hindi Bazaar. Instead of mentioning Dongri, there's a Tandil Street. Tandil Street sounds like an English name. Some Muslims say, where do you stay? I stay in UK. <laughs> you know what UK? Umar Khadi. <laughs> Why? They are ashamed. I don't blame them. We are to blame. Same way, the Muslim women, sometimes they don't like wearing the burqa. You should wear the burqa properly. It should be loose. It should not be see-through, and but natural, besides the hijab of the body, there should be hijab of the eyes and the tongue. Hijab of the eyes and the tongue is more important. Quran says, lower your gaze. If you do an outward hijab, but your deeds are not right, it's useless. So what the sister should do, they should wear a proper hijab and behave well. Some may say, that I don't mind wearing, wearing the hijab, but you know, I'm living in an awkward area. See, Bombay, it's very easy. Bombay is very easy. Kasmabad in city. Pune, difficult. It's a stronghold of the Hindus. We can't wear hijab there. State like the Kolapur. Kolapur you can't wear. See, these are all petty excuses. I can give thousand and one better excuses. Petty excuses. If you analyze, there are thousands of Muslim women who are wearing the hijab in Pune as well as in Kolapur. What the Prophet
problem. The problem is in your mind. Some may say that, see, if we wear this hijab, we are the odd person out. The moment we walk on the street, all the eyes are focused at us. Ah, that's the girl. They look at you. We are the odd person out. I do agree. An odd person always attracts attention. But the attention that you attract, you aren't doing it deliberately, but the people that look at you, they look at you with modesty, not with lust. It's, bet, it's much better that a few, few more people look at you with modesty than a few people look at you with lust. It's preferable. Those that look at you because they're wearing the hijab is with modesty. It, it creates miracles. If you analyze any Muslim lady who's in the hijab and behaves decently, the moment she goes in the bus, even the non-Muslim will offer her the seat if the bus is full. But natural, as I said, wearing the cloak, wearing the coat, is much more preferable than only wearing a shalwar kameez and a scarf. Because shalwar kameez are worn by many people. And many of the Punjabis also, they wear shalwar kameez and they take a orni. So if you want to identify yourself, it is preferable that you wear a coat. The Arabic word given in the Quran is Jilbab. And then wear the scarf. If you want to cover your face, Alhamdulillah, no objection at all. But it's not compulsory. In our mixed society today, the names that we have, especially the surnames, they are common to various religions. For example, if a Muslim is coming from the Kokan region, his surname may be Thakur. You have a Muslim Thakur, you have a Hindu Thakur. His surname may be Mukadam. You may have a Muslim Mukadam and a Hindu Mukadam. His surname may be Naik. A Muslim Naik as well as a Hindu Naik. Surname may be Pawaskar, Dhamaskar, all are common Hindu as well as Muslim. If you go to the region of Gujarat, there you have the Patel. The Muslim Patel, the Hindu Patel. You have the Desai. The Muslim Desai, the Hindu Desai. You have the Shah. The Muslim Shah, the Hindu Shah. If you go abroad, you may have heard of the famous Kari who comes South Africa, Cape Town. Rashid Brown. Brown. It sounds like a European name. Then you have surnames like Johnson. I basically feel that the surname it indicates from which locality you come and which family tree you belong to. So if you have a surname, saying Thakur or Naik, ha, this person is a Kokni. His father is so and so, his grandfather is so and so, I know the Thakur family. So the surname indicates from which locality you come and what is the family tree. But if you have such surname which can be mixed with a non-Muslim surname, you have to be very careful. You have to see to it that your first name is a very clear name. It clearly indicates that you are a Muslim. If the surname is a little bit doubtful, the name should indicate very clearly that you are a Muslim. It should be somewhat like Abdullah, Muhammad, Zakir, Ahmad, Sultan. All these names, no non-Muslim will ever think or a Muslim will ever think that these are non-Muslims. You will never find a non-Muslim by the name of Muhammad, by the name of Sultan, by the name of Ahmad. Never. So if the surname is confusing, the name should be very clear. It should not also be confusing, like Danish. Danish is found in Muslim as well as Parsi. For example, Kashmira, found in Muslim and Hindus. For example, Shela, found in Muslim as a Hindu. If the name is confusing, it's preferable to change the name. The name is used more. The surname is the identity for your family background and the place from where you come. And the second name also. That the father's name, as far as possible, should also be clear cut. For example, Muhammad Abdul Karim Naik. Find Muhammad cannot be a Hindu. 
Abdul Karim cannot be a Hindu. Knight may be, but here the chances are that Mo is a Muslim. But some people take undue advantage of such names. Though the name will be very good. For example, Muhammad Patel. But when they write, they write M. Patel. So people will think that we are Hindus. Amongst Hindus, they write M. Patel. Amongst Muslim invitations, they write Muhammad Patel. Two phase emptiness. Two phase emptiness. Don't take undue advantage. They are misusing the name. If the label shows your intent, wear it. When you go to school, every school has a uniform. If you wear a grey pant and a white shirt with grey stripes, you are coming from St. Peter's school. If you wear a white shirt and a purple trousers, you are coming from Anza school. Every school has a particular uniform. In that school, the prefects, they wear a badge. Prefect or head girl or head boy. They are proud to identify themselves as prefects, therefore they wear the badge. Prefect. Same way. Same with the doctors. The doctors, before their name, they write DR full stop, meaning doctor. Why? Doctor is a higher degree as compared to a plain graduate. First they were Mr. Now they became doctor. Because we are doctors, there is no problem at all in, in identifying yourself that I am a doctor. I have got the degree. And on the card they put the sign, cross sign. And outside also. On the clinic they put the cross sign. Why? If someone is going on the road and if he requires any medical aid, they can stop the car with the sign of a cross. Just imagine, suppose a person who is not a doctor, if he puts a sign outside his office, a cross sign and a DR in front of him, he is not a doctor, he is a fake. And suppose you are finding for a doctor, if your mother is sick, and if you go to that person, let's see my mother is sick, and then you realize he is not a medical doctor. The cross outside his shop was a fake sign. You will surely get irritated at him. Maybe in that time your mother may expire. Cheating is not allowed in Islam. Whatever you are, wear that same label. Don't wear a wrong label. The label that you wear helps you in several ways. It helps you in several ways. For example, if a Muslim is wearing the label of a beard and a cap and walking on the road, if any non-Muslim want any spiritual help, they can identify. Ha! There's the Muslim wearing a cap and a beard. If I want spiritual help, I have to go to him. If the person who I can trust is a Muslim, that person with a cap and beard is an honest person. Because the religion says that you should be honest, you should be kind, you should be just, you should not cheat. Besides helping the non-Muslims, it also helps us Muslims. The moment we see another person wearing a cap and a beard, and the moment you identify him to be a Muslim, you want to wish him salam. When you wish salam, you get salam. And when you reply back the greeting, again you get, again you get salam. If you go abroad, suppose you go to Delhi, if you go to Delhi, or any foreign place, and if you want to offer salah, you don't know where is the mosque. But naturally you can't ask any Tom, Dick and Harry on the road, where is the mosque? He will not know. You will search for a Muslim. After you have identified him to be a Muslim, will you ask him, Bhai sahab, masjid kidare? Where is the mosque? He will help you. When you go abroad, when you go to England, America, or to places like Delhi, you want to have food. We Muslims have halal food. Where are you going to find halal food in a foreign place? But natural, you will try and find a Muslim and then ask him, is there any good Muslim restaurant close by? He'll help you. This label helps you in several ways. And there are several labels you can have. Besides having labels on your body, you can have, you can have labels. For example, when you enter the house. The moment you enter the house, sometimes you feel, Posters of film stars, Amitabh Bachchan. You see photographs of Dilip Kumar. All false idols. 
the moment you enter the house, this should be a sign. For example, Hada bin Fazli Rabbi. This is the bounty of my Lord. Immediately the person recognizes this is a Muslim house. <coughs> if a non-Muslim enters this auditorium, he will immediately realize, ah, this is something like Arabic. He may not know what it is, but he will realize this auditorium belongs to a Muslim. And then he asks, what is that? What is this? So I say, this is in Nazina in the Lail Islam. It means it's the voice of the Quran. It's the voice of the Quran from Suleh Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 19, which says, the only religion acceptable in the sight of Allah, in the sight of God, is Islam. So the Muslim says, oh, is it so? Only religion acceptable is Islam. He said, yes. It gives you an opportunity to do da'wah. If the label shows your intent, wear it. You get several labels in the market. For example, this is a label. It's a dua from Surah Zukro. That when you write, it says, Subhan, Subhan al Sakalana Haza. And the dua continues that when you write, you ask for protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can put this up in your vehicle. This label. You can have labels everywhere. And there are several labels that are available here. For example, prayer keeps together. Read the Quran. Say no to alcohol and gambling. The Quran. Chapter 2, verse 219. Don't get caught dead without Islam. This is a label which is also put behind the vehicle, behind the van of Islamic Propagation Center in Durban, the organization of Sheikh Ahmed Didad. Don't get caught dead without Islam. Allah is just a prayer away. The beautiful label, beautiful. Give thanks in all things. For this is the will of Allah. Islam makes the difference. Recycle the Quran. It's a verse from the Quran. From Surah Araf, chapter 7, verse number 31. It's in short, recycle the Quran. Welcome to Islam. Islam, the way to victory. Give thanks in all things, for this is the will of Allah. <coughs> the Quran has the answer. Allah is our protector. A man mind plant his way, but Allah directs his steps. It works. Muslims live by the word of Allah. Did you say your prayers? The best thing you can spend in your life, sorry, the best thing you can spend on your children is time. One who in search of an honest earning is like a warrior in the way of Allah. Worship the Creator, not the creation. A very beautiful sign. Worship the Creator, not the creation, especially for India. Read the Holy Quran, broaden your knowledge. No day in a person's life should pass without an act of charity. Beautiful, beautiful. No compulsion in Islam. Islam means Islam enjoins universal brotherhood. Say no to alcohol and gambling. There are various labels. These are not available here. They are imported. But inshallah, if it's possible, or if time permits, we will have some of them reproduced here. What we have in the IRF at present is a small sticker. Al-Quran, the last and final revelation of God. I read it the most positive book in the world. A proclamation to humanity. A fountain of mercy and wisdom. A 
born into the heedless, a guide to the erring, and assurance to those in doubt, a solace to the suffering, a hope to those in despair. This sticker is available in the last set of the Islamic State Foundation. But today, anyone who wants is most welcome to have one. We have two types. One which is put directly in the front, and the other is a reverse sticker. It is put behind the glass. You can put it in your car, you can put it in a showcase, you can put it beneath your table if it has a glass top. These stickers are available absolutely free. You can, it is your pleasure that you can have any one of them from the counter after the lecture is over. The self is signed. If the label shows your intent, you should wear it. It gives you an opening to do da'wah. I'd like to end my talk by giving a quotation from the Quran, from Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 125, which says, Udu ila sabili wal hasna wajadillum ahsan Invite all to the way of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching and argue with them and reason with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. Wa akhru dawan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakallah and thank you to Dr. Zakir Naik for giving a very informative, inter, informative talk today. We now go on to the second part of our program wherein we begin with the question and answer session on the topic of the... We may allow questions on other topics of Islam and comparative religion. <coughs> As a brother over here would like to ask a question. If we can have the mic... Assalamu alaikum brother. I uh, wanted to ask you about the burqa where the ladies wear here in India. We find a lot of ladies wearing the black burqa and some wearing like the bohris wearing a different colored burqas. I mean again does it like uh, labeling the intents of uh, various ladies. Can you just... The brother has posed the question that he sees that many ladies wear black burqa, some wear colored burqas, etc. What is the right thing? Does it identify your label? People have a misconception. Muslims as well as non-Muslims that if a lady wears a burqa, she should wear a black burqa. Nowhere does the Quran say Nowhere does the Quran say that the burqa should be black. But I'll give you a reason. Why do they say that you should wear black? <coughs> that why do they prefer wearing black? Because when you wear black, there are less chances of it getting dirty. But Islam gives you permission, you can wear any color. Any color as long as it is, does not attract opposite sex. Like Flores and Jakpak. <coughs> Otherwise, you can wear white, you can wear brown, blue, any color. But most of the ladies prefer black because it gets less dirty. If you have black burqa, you have to wash it maybe once a week. If you wear a white burqa, you may have to wash it every day. The choice is yours. If you want to wear white, you can wear white. If you want to wear black, you can wear black. I do agree that this concept is much more acceptable in the Bodhi community. They are perfectly following Islam in this aspect that you can wear any color. They prefer wearing colored, no problem at all. It's their choice. Hope that answers the question. Assalamu alaikum. Is the Manga Sutra only an identity as far as a married woman in uh, Hinduism is concerned, or is it permissible even in Islam? So the brother has posed the question that the Manga Sutra, that is a black necklace. The black bead, necklace with black beads, in between it is interspersed with golden dots, sometimes. Is it a sign only of the married woman in Hinduism, or can a Muslim also wear it? Yes, brother. It's a custom adopted from the Hindus. The Hindu woman, to prove that she's married, they wear the Mangal Sutra. They wear the Mangal Sutra, and they put kumkum kum in the margin, in the man. Is it permissible in Islam? 
anything which is particularly a sign of a particular community is not permissible it is preferable that the muslim women avoid such thing i don't say it's haram because a direct sign is an indirect sign especially the kokni people the kokni muslims they should have a mangal sutra a marriage cannot take place without mangal sutra mahal ne wa chalenge mangal sutra ne hona chahiye mangal sutra hona hi chahiye this is the wrong concept i was speaking to a hindu he told me mangal sutra has several benefits i said what benefit it has he told me that see if a lady wears mangal sutra she can be identified that she is married so no one will tease her so i said very good logic you believe that a mad woman should not be teased alhamdulillah we muslim believe that no woman should be teased irrespective whether she is mad or not she should not be teased hope that answers the question as a third question certainly assalam alaikum brother walaikum assalam is it compulsory for a non muslim to change the name when they revert walaikum assalam the sister has posed the question <coughs> that is it compulsory for a non muslim to change their name when they revert or when they convert it is not a fard that you should change your name but as i mentioned if the label shows your intent wear it the only names which are not permissible to be kept totally prohibited are the names which involve shirk for example if the name is ram is associating partners with allah subhanahu wa taala not allowed if it's lakshmi associating partners with allah subhanahu wa taala such names which associate partners with allah subhanahu wa taala are totally prohibited the other names preferably should be changed and the reason i have given you all the reasons all the various reasons but there are some people for example gary miller he is a mathematician he reverted to islam his new name is abdul ahad umar he has changed his name but many a times when he gives a lecture he gives under the same name why because he was previously famous as gary miller when he gives a lecture under the banner of gary miller he will attract more people he is using it to attract people to islam alhamdulillah since gary miller is not a name dealing with shirk such usage is perfectly allowed another good example is of cat stevens cat stevens the famous pop singer his new name is yusuf islam if you tell to a person yusuf islam is giving a lecture maybe the western world won't know but if you say cat stevens ah we know him he was the michael jackson of the 70s so using such names which do not involve shirk but for a good purpose for doing dawa i feel it is permissible otherwise you should always change your name that reminds me of an incident that one there was a hindu girl by the name of rekha she married a muslim boy and she converted to islam during the course of the time i realized her only reason for conversion was to marry that muslim boy so i was trying to explain to both these couples that about the good points about islam etc alhamdulillah she got convinced but one point she was not convinced at she said dr zakir i agree with you everything but give me one logical reason why should i change my name so i told her i repeated a part of my lecture which i gave just now these are the reasons that the label shows and wear it she is not convinced she is telling me imagine dr zakir i was called rekha for 25 years and now you want me to change my name what's the logic 25 years i was called by the name of rekha and now you are telling me to change my name i tried my level best i could not put the message through alhamdulillah allah says in the quran in surah an kabut chapter 29 was number 69 if you strive in the way of allah if you do jihad in the way of allah allah opened up your pathway then i told her her okay sister what was your name before marriage so she said rekha rekha pandurang shivastav but now the name that changed just to conceal the identity she said rekha pandurang shivastav so i said fine now she got married to abdul sheik now what's your new name sister Now my new name is Rekha Abdul Sheikh. I said, 
It's a pity, sister. For 25 years, you were called Rekha Pandurang Srivastava, and now you change your name to Rekha Abdul Sheikh. What an illogical person you are. She immediately realized her mistake. 25 years, Rekha Pandurang Srivastava, and now, in a matter of a few days, Rekha Abdul Sheikh, why did you change your name? She could not give me the answer. I told her, I will give you the answer. The reason is, previously you preferred being identified as the daughter of Pandurang Srivastava. But now, you prefer being identified as the wife of Abdul Sheikh. Same way. Since previously you were a Hindu, now you accept Islam, and you agree Islam is the best way of life, you should identify yourself as a Muslim. And Alhamdulillah, it did the work, she was convinced. Anyway, in Islam, Islam gives the permission for a woman to maintain her maiden name if she wishes to after marriage. She can maintain her maiden name. If she wants to adopt the new family surname, she's most welcome. Hope that answers the question, sister. Can we have the mic in front? There's a brother over here who would like to ask a question. There's a brother. I think there's... Assalamu alaikum, sir. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Suppose the person keeps a beard and wears a cap and he does bad deeds, he does sins then uh, won't he spoil the image of Islam and Muslims? So is it not preferable that people should not wear the label, that Muslims should not wear the label? Mr. Ashad, that if a Muslim wears the cap and keeps the beard, and if he commits sins, it will spoil the image of Muslims. So is it not preferable that you should not wear the label? I do agree with you, brother, that if you are a bad Muslim, if you are dishonest. If you spoil the name of Islam, it's preferable not to wear the label. But most of the Muslims are not like that. I do agree. Many Muslims, they create mistakes. They do a little bit of mistakes, which is common in society. But if you wear the label, these, it's an opportunity for you to improve these mistakes. I'd like to give you an example that normally if you give a commitment to a person then there are more chances of you fulfilling that act than when you don't give a commitment for example if someone calls you to the lecture in IRF that will you come on Sunday morning if you say I'll see there are more chances you will not turn up but if you say inshallah I'm talking about the correct inshallah not the I'm not talking about the miyawa inshallah inshallah means God willing inshallah I'll come and if you mean it, you will try your level best to keep up your commitment. So if you make a commitment, there are more chances you'll fulfill it. There are two types of people. One is a pessimist person, the other is an optimist. The pessimist person will think, Oh, now if I wear the cap, I'm research, so many bad deeds. If I wear the cap, I'll spoil the name of Islam. He does not wear the cap and he keeps on increasing his sins and mistakes. Suppose, there is a person who is a bad person but not all that bad. He has a little modesty in him. He is bothered about his name. He just got a little bit, he has got some little bit botheration about his just. So if that boy, if that youngster, if he wants to tease a girl, he will never tease the girl in his area. Why? He will be recognized. Oh, this person is so and so son. Bapki just jayin. So if he wants to tease, he will go to Beach Candy. <laughs> he will not tease his locality. Why? He will be recognized. He will go to an area where he won't be recognized. So same way, if you wear the cap, and if you are an optimistic person, the moment you wear the cap, you are conscious. Oh, now I am a Muslim. I better not create any mistakes. I better not do any sin. So if you go to movies, you say, no, now I wear the cap. I can't go to movies. If you feel like teasing a girl, oh, I better not tease a girl. I'm following the names of the Muslims. So if you're an optimistic person, you should wear the cap and the beard. It will be a moral check on you. And inshallah, all these mistakes which you do, which are common in society, will inshallah slowly disappear. Hope that answers the question, brother. Uh, uh, sister, from a, uh, a question from a young sister. Sure. Assalamu alaikum. 
I am Alia studying in, in the sixth. Uncle, you said about the label for man and for men and women, but not for children. What is the label? What is the Islamic label for children? <laughs> the sister has posed the question. The young sister that I have described the label for man and woman in Islam. She wants to know what is the label for a child, for a child in Islam. The person is by the We look at those games. games. <coughs> See, for a child, basically, if it's a child, a child does not basically require any label. You know why? Because every child, according to Islam, is a Muslim. He's born in Dunul Fit, according to our beloved Prophet. Every child is a Muslim. Whether he's born in a Hindu family, or a Christian family, or a Muslim family, if he's a child, he's a Muslim, or she's a Muslim. They do not require any navel. But, still, if you want to identify who are the parents, if you want to identify from which background they come from, there are certain labels. For example, for my son, who's about 10 months old, only 10 months, I told my wife to cut the cap. My cap was too big for him. So my wife cut the cap and she stitched it to fit his head. <laughs> but fortunately, Alhamdulillah, we were able later on to get caps which fit his head. So now he has more caps than what I have. And he wears the cap. Alhamdulillah, it looks, it looks wonderful. It suits him. I also bought for him batches. Not his big batch. I got for him small batches of Allah. Of Allah Muhammad, if he's upon him. Small batches. So even he's proud to wear his label. Same for children. If it's a girl, you should inculcate the habit from childhood to Islamic clothes. And so when skirt, the moment the child, as she said, she's the age of seven or eight, she should wear, she should be covered. Though it's not first, but it should start from childhood itself where shawar comes, whatever it is, and wear a scarf. Wear a scarf. And normally, if the parents wear a cap, even the boy wants to wear a cap. The children like to imitate the parents. Same way, if the girl sees that my mother is wearing a scarf, even she wants to have a scarf. Give it to her. These things are much better as compared to the other toys. I do agree that if you go to school, if you go to school, most of the school will not allow your child to wear a cap. Most of the school will not allow. Or your daughter to wear a scarf. No problem. In school, it's not compulsory that these students should wear it always. At least inculcate the habit initially. If they can wear always, alhamdulillah, it's not compulsory. In school, they can have other labels. For example, you can put these stickers. You can put these stickers on the book. These stickers of IRF on the book. And immediately they, they will realize that this book belongs to a Muslim. This book belongs to a Muslim. Actually, I bought these things for the lecture, but I realized that my lecture will be too long, so I kept it in the side room. Alhamdulillah, somebody has asked the question, so I have an opportunity to show it to you. Read this. For field teacher and information, contact IPCI. There are other rulers saying, welcome to Islam. Islam calls you. Give these rulers to your children to use. No one can take an objection. On the compass box, you can put the stickers saying, Welcome to Islam. Read the Quran. Humble stickers, it will do the job. You will have an opportunity to do da'wah, even with the teacher. If the teacher says, Why are you putting these things? You have to ask the teacher, What is wrong in it? You read the Quran, and if you point out any wrong thing in the Quran, I will take out that sticker. Opportunity to do da'wah. Your child can do da'wah among the friends. Instead, of wearing those t-shirts which have got Donald Duck photographs 
wear that T-shirt. For example, welcome to Islam. Here it is, Dawa or Destruction from IPCI. These T-shirts are wonderful. Instead of getting them T-shirt of Donald Duck. Here it is. The spirit of success is never sold in bottles. Don't drink. We have a somewhat similar pamphlet that's fire in your belly. That if alcohol is a disease, it's the only disease sold in bottles. Even those can be used as posters. And there are others. There are several. We have got several. Till death do us part, don't smoke. Believe me, these t-shirts no one will take objection to. No one. It's a universal message. Don't smoke. Don't drink. Even the government will help you. <laughs> if you make in bike, they may subsidize the rate. Normally when we go abroad, when we go abroad, we get for our children toys, Lego and Monopoly, etc. I'm not against toys, believe me. They get for them planes, they get from them tractors. I'm not against toys. But if the toy that you get takes you towards the last one of Tala, it's much better. People, all of us know about Monopoly. This is an Islamic version of Monopoly. Steps to Paradise. The Indian version of Monopoly is trade. Surely we'll be knowing the, how to play the game trade. Most of you. That in this game of Monopoly and trade, you normally buy land and sell land. You buy and sell land and try and make money. It makes you a better businessman or a better businesswoman. This game is Steps to Paradise. An exciting Islamic game for the whole family, including you and me. And this game has been devised from the monopoly. Similar. Similarly, it has a board. Here. Step to paradise. Instead of start, it is saying Bismillah. Instead of start, it is saying Bismillah. And the finish is Jannah. The finish is paradise. You also you throw a dice. You throw a dice and you move the counters. And instead of money, you know in Monopoly you have got pounds, you have got dollars. Right? In trade you have got rupees. In this you have got sawab. Sawab. Five thousand sawab. And here you have ten thousand sawab. So you have 50,000 sawab. So here it teaches your child to earn sawab, not money. Sawab. And instead of chance and community, if you know the Monopoly game, when you come on the star or the question mark, it's the chance of community. Here, there you pick up a card. You also pick up a card. And when you pick up a card, there are questions asked. For example, if you pray five times a day, you get 20,000 sawab. If you don't pay, if you don't pray, pay a fine of 1,000 sawab. So the child realizes, if I want to win this game, if I want to win this game, I have to pray five times a day. It says, if you go for parties, pay a fine of 1,000 sawab. <coughs> if you drink alcohol, pay a fine of 20,000 sawab. If you read the Quran daily, you get a reward of 20,000 sawab. So the child is enjoying, at the same time being educated. Instead of buying, mono, instead of buying Piccadilly, Mayfair, Bendy Bazaar, Mahmud Ali Road, and a Warden Road in trade, you try and acquire sawab. 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 It educates the child. He knows that if I want to win the game, I have to acquire sawab. And so on and so forth. It improves the knowledge of a child and his behavior. Every one of us know about snakes and ladders. Who does not know about snakes and ladders? See, 100%, everyone, the youngster as well as the adult, everyone knows about snakes and ladders. But very few people know about the Islamic version. Because snakes and ladders, I would prefer calling it slopes and ladders. This good Islamic version of that game. Where the 
mentioned, a new game of snakes and ladders for Muslim children. Here, the moment you come below a ladder, it says, obeying your parents, you go up a ladder. And the result is, you please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you go forward, it says, that mixing with bad children, you come down a snake. It says, doing many bad things. Then, if you pay five times a day, you go up a ladder. You're thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you disobey your parents, you come down a ladder. You come down a snake. So in this way, while the child is playing snakes and ladders, he is being educated. The game is taking him towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some Muslim says, all these toys are haram. You can make the haram thing halal. Do Zabiha. These snakes and ladders, whatever it is, converted to the Islamic version. It will educate the child. Instead of buying jigsaw puzzle of Taj Mahal or of Great Wall of China or the Eiffel Tower, here, 1,000 pieces puzzle, Holy Kaaba by evening. Imagine, 1,000 pieces. When your child is making the jigsaw puzzle, every nook and corner of the Haram Sharif will remain in his mind. Jigsaw puzzle of 400 pieces of the mosque of a beloved prophet, Masjid al Nabi of Medina Sharif. When he's making the jigsaw puzzle, this will remain a part of his memory. He would wish that one day he goes to Medina. Others people think, I want to see Taj Mahal. Mommy, I want to see Taj Mahal. Mommy, I want to go to Paris to see Eiffel Tower. Now they start saying, Mommy, I want to go to Haram Sharif. It's a good desire from childhood. There are several games. We have got the Islamic cards also. We face this facets of Islam. It's a quiz game for the entire family. These things, these things will educate our children. And regarding the label, what does the label have to do with these games? You know what has to do with the games? You call your non-Muslim friends to play the game. And you tell them, you go for dance parties, you lose 50,000, what or 10,000 sawab. If you drink alcohol, you lose money. If you don't drink, you get a reward. You are, imagine your child, your five-year-old child, your ten-year-old child is doing dawah with the non-Muslims. You and I can't do better. This game is doing the wonders. I know several rich Muslims. Who every month, they go to America, they go to States, they go to England. Have you seen this game? No. They always get for the children, Lego, aeroplane, tractor, monopoly. They are ignorant. Really they are ignorant. And if the person is rich, he says, see my young child of the age of 12, he's handling the computer. Mashallah, Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. I'm not against the computer, I'm for the computer. If it takes you ahead, you should know such thing. But when you give the computer to a child, give along with it a, a package called as Alim. We have the Alim on the computer. The complete Quran is on the computer, on the diskettes. The Quran is on the computer, the Hadith is on the computer, the Fiqh is on the computer, the Sharia is on the computer. What you have to know at your fingertips. Instead of giving video games, <coughs> give them the PCIQ, the Islamic quiz. There were Islamic games on the computer. Who knows of it? No one. In Bombay, I did, I did not come across a single Muslim who has these. Imagine, it's a pity. All those you know, all, who are, all those who I know, have been given from IRF to them. Imagine, we are in the dark. So even for the child, if the label shows your intent, ask your child to wear it. But if the child does not wear it, the child will not be held responsible. The parent will be held responsible. Hope that answers the question. Assalamu alaikum. Is it Islamic to wear the shirt pant and... <coughs> so that was the question. <coughs> Is it Islamic for a Muslim to wear a shirt and pant? We find many Muslims saying, 
The short and pant is the dress of a Nasara. Believe me, I have not come across any authentic post which says that shirt and a pant is the dress of the Christian. Cross, fine. Some people say tie is a sign of Christianity. It resembles the cross. See, these are absurd things. In no authentic book will you find, neither in any dictionary you will find, that tie is a sign of the cross. There are a few Muslims who are so anti-Western, they are so anti-Western, I don't blame them, that everything the West does, they blame it. They blame them. This is a cultural dress. As long as it doesn't go against the basic six principles of hijab, you can wear it. <coughs> but they won't be satisfied. They say it is haram. So what do you have to do? You have to give them proof. If you read the Sahih Bukhari, if you read the Sahih Bukhari in volume 6, <coughs> in volume 6, in the book of dress, chapter number 8, chapter number 8, hadith number 686, it says that our beloved prophet said that the Muharim should not wear shirt and trousers. Imagine, the hadith is saying a Muharim, a person who is doing Hajj, a person who is doing Umrah, if he is in Ahram, he should not wear a shirt and a trouser. I have got no objection. These people quote the hadith and they take out the word Muharim and they say, a prophet said, don't wear shirt and trousers. During Ahram, but naturally you can't even wear the topi. They are misquoting the hadith. Immediately the next hadith of Sahih Bukhari, volume 7, in the book of Dress, chapter number 8, hadith number 687, it says that a beloved prophet said, if you can't get an izar, wear a trouser. The word trouser is mentioned, sorry, it's short, that a beloved prophet, Muhammad the peace be upon him, he went to a funeral and he covered the body with his shirt. Sahih Bukhari, volume 7, chapter number, the book of death, chapter number 8, hadith number 687 says, a beloved prophet covered the body of the funeral with his shirt, not with his kurta. Do you know the word shirt? It is also mentioned in the Quran. How many people out here knew that the word shirt is there in the Quran? How many people? Raise your hands. Alhamdulillah. Which was do you know? But it was there you knew. You knew the word shirt is mentioned in the Quran. You didn't know. You knew, brother? Which can? Alhamdulillah. The brother is right. And I believe the mother tongue of the brother is Arabic. Correct, brother? I think I met you before. Alhamdulillah. The brother out here is an Arab. He rightly said, it's mentioned in Surah Yusuf, chapter number 12. The verse number is 93. Yusuf alayhi salam tells that, go and take this shirt and put it on the front of the face of my father, he'll recognize me. The word shirt, kameez, is mentioned in the Quran. And the Muslim says, shirt is haram. The word kurta is not there in the Quran. I have not come across. If you can show me, I'll be pleased to know about it. I have not come across. The word kameez is there in the Quran. How about trouser? Can you wear trouser? Same thing. If we refer to Sahih Bukhari, volume 7, in the book of Dress, chapter number 15, chapter number 14, both the chapters, it says, the first hadith, hadith number 695 says, that our beloved Prophet said, if you can't get a izar, wear a trouser. The word trouser is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari. And the next hadith says that when in the state of Ahram, you can't wear a shirt and a trouser. I do agree. In the state of Ahram, when you're performing Hajj or Umrah, you can't wear a cap, neither a shirt. You have to wear two pieces of unsewn cloth. Preferably white. So that there's no differentiation between all the Muslims. But the Sahih Bukhari gives you permission. Assalamualaikum, brother. Waalaikum I do salam. agree that a Muslim should wear the label in a mixed society like in India for identification. But uh, what is the necessity for a Muslim to wear a label in a Muslim country? 
Like take for example Pakistan or Saudi Arabia. Sister said, she had asked a question that wearing the label, she's convinced that wearing a label in a mixed society like India is good. But what's the use of wearing a label in a completely Muslim society, for example, Pakistan? Sister, I'd like to ask you that surely these Pakistanis sometime or the other